Welcome to the DIY series, how to build your food truck with me, Frank Baltieres, and we are doing my promise video series, the new and updated Q&A version, weekly Q&A. Since I'm not bringing you more of the updated construction on-site videos, my promise to you is to give you Q&A, and that way I answer each and one of your questions that you drop in the comments or that you email to me uh, at rollingburritosfoodtruck at gmail.com. And today, a frequently asked question that I received is, what is the sequence of events or the construction order that you should have to be able to build your food truck? Should I start with the plumbing? Should I start with the electrical? Should I start with the lights? You know, like, what do I do? And that is actually a great question. Uh, something that I'm going to tackle today for you guys. As you guys can see, I have my hood installed right here. This is one of my, this is the last food truck that I built and I built it in a record speed. I'm going to show you exactly how I built it, that sequence that I did. I have my hood, my stainless steel, my three compartment sink, uh, this dish rack right here that is actually very, very handy. And then right here I put like a speed rail and these little hooks right here. I became so versatile in construction since I've been in, in such a long time. That look at this. I made a multi-purpose easel right on the hood. That way it's easy for me to talk to you guys and actually write it down. I posted it on my trusty post-it note. But now I'm going to make it nice and big for you guys to see. And hopefully it helps you answer that question in how should I start? Where should I start? So I can get done efficiently, fast, and I'm up and running here in the next couple months. Right now we're still in January. Cold January. As you guys can see, I just have my jacket. But with that, let's get started right away. When I bought my trailer, because I've only built trailers, there's two things that came from it. You have to buy it. Number, number, number one, the first step, you can't have a food truck or a food trailer without the food truck or the food trailer. Let's be serious. You can't have a tent. I guess that's the second option. You can't have a tent and a lot of people start with tents or as they call them, pop-ups. Nothing wrong with that as long as your health department approves it. At, at Farmer's Market especially, they have that. There's like one here in downtown, uh, the city that I live in, that they have like a little breakfast place that makes sandwiches and they're a little pop-up. They have like the little skillet and they approve them as long as there's a tent or a covering on top. Make sure that you check your health department requirements. That's number one. So that's the first thing that you need is the truck or the trailer. And usually I find mine on Facebook Marketplace. The only way or the only reason that I bought a brand new one and I bought it from a place called May's Trailer Sales in the good old state of Indiana was because when I bought that particular white trailer, it was a 7x16 Cargo Mate Blazer. That's the only brand that I have used and the only brand that I would use personally. There's more out there and you guys can use them. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with them. But personally, I like Cargo Mate Blazer. It's like you guys saying, you guys like Toyota Tundras, Chevy um, Silverados, Ford F-150. I was going to say Chevy F-150, but that doesn't exist. Uh, so there's certain brands that you guys like and are loyal to. It's the same thing with me. I love Cargo Mate Blazers and I'm loyal to them and I love them. But with that, let's get started. That's number one. Oh, the reason, oh, sorry, I forgot to say, the reason that I bought brand new was because when I bought that one, the price difference uh, around 2020, 2021, as you guys know, if you guys remember, the market was like, whew, everything was sky high in prices, cars were high, you name it, the price values of it were high, real estate was high. And so the, the value and the difference between a used one and a new one was very minimal, right, like 300 bucks. So you might as well go new, and that's what I did. But that's the only time that I ever bought a new trailer. Other than that, Facebook Marketplace, I know it's a grind, and I know it's hard to find one that's in good condition, that's at a good price, and that's not all beat up. I know that, or a truck, but you just have to keep doing your research if you don't want to buy it brand new. I'm sorry to tell you, there is work to be done when looking for something. But... Let's get started right away. So step one, what I did is obviously you find your truck or trailer. I'm gonna write it here. Hopefully my handwriting, my chicken scratches as they call it, are good for you. That's step one. Can't do it without it. Number two is, this is, this is assuming you have bought all the products already, okay? I'm not gonna tell you where to buy them because on all my videos previous to this, that's where they are at. I have thought about making a course out of this, but to be honest, I love to give you guys everything for free. The only thing that I obviously I ask is that you guys take the time to watch it. But if you guys have some interest in like a small little course where I put them all 
the videos and on maybe do maybe narrations on it or like a, a voiceover on some of the videos. I can't do that. Obviously, I'd have to charge a little bit. You know, think nothing crazy like five thousand bucks, nothing like that. Uh, you know, uh, people that sell courses, you know, for high prices, that's not something I would do. Very small price. Something that has been in my mind for a few years, maybe like a year and a half or so. But for now, I want to give you everything that I can for free because I and I appreciate you guys watching the videos. So that's step one again. Step two, oh sorry. So step two, what I did is I installed my window. So I know it sounds weird, but just like in construction, so I, I built a lot of houses, I've done a lot of electrical work for forever. Um, there is a sequence of events of construction that go. Usually the electricians are always at the end, that's us. And before us, you obviously have your framers, you have to have the framing. Then you get the plumbers or the HVAC, depends on uh, the GC on that on that project. Usually it's the usually it's the HVAC guys and the plumbers. It could be the other way around, but electricians are always the last. We're always at the end. And then obviously you get drywall, you get the tapers, you get the painters, you get the cabinet guys, the floor guys, and all that fun stuff. Same thing kind of here. I wouldn't say that I have like a sequence that I go by personally. I'm more like of a hey. The day is beautiful today where we're going to work outside today. Or the day is rainy, we're going to work inside today. That's kind of how I took my build. But the window is what I, I built. I, I installed first right when I bought it. I just ripped open my window, as you see under some of my videos, and I installed it. This is if I were to start over again, okay? This is a video. If I were to start over, this is what I would do. So my window. And then step three is the floor. So I would install my floor. You can do diamond plate or what I have used recently, which is the gray, coin gray flooring by Husky. I think Husky or they have other brands now. You guys have sold out a lot of my links that I have in affiliate links on Amazon. The paid affiliate links, I click on some of them, sold out. And I appreciate you guys for buying stuff because obviously that's why they're there. But if I cannot give you a link, it's because it does not exist. <laughs> and you guys sold me out. It wasn't even me. You guys sold out the, the vendor. But that's what I would do. You would do the coin gray flooring, install the flooring, make sure that you put that protective uh, flooring, like the red rosin um, paper that they do, so that way you guys don't scratch up the floor. Step three would be the electrical. So we do electrical next. Why the electrical? Because you're gonna install it, you're gonna install the electrical on the inside of the walls. So obviously not here because it is cooking equipment, but behind. I caught one of my mistakes. This is actually step four. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. But don't get distracted by my mistakes. It's it's irrelevant. Um, <laughs> that one distracted. But anyways, oh, so behind the walls, uh, usually it's usually actually that's the next one. So right here, if you guys can see, I have my stainless steel wall. This is a cooking the cooking side. But over here, I have FRP, that's actually gonna be step five, is the walls. But behind here, there's nothing here right now, but behind here, because I didn't put any electrical on this side, you would have Romex running behind the walls, kind of like you would have in your house. You have wiring behind your house. If you wanted to use pipe, or as we call it, EMT, and you wanted to do it on top of the walls, then you would put your walls first and then the electrical. So you could swap that step out a little bit. So you can see when you guys ask me this question on YouTube, it's hard for me to answer because I don't know the details of your build. Are you using EMT? Are you going to use Romex? So if I tell you guys that, you're going to be like, well, he told me to do this way. So that's why it's kind of hard for me to tell you and you guys have to gauge it with your construction. But if you're using Romex, as I have recommended, you would do electrical next. Do not install lights yet or anything like that. Just poke out the wires, poke them out. Step five, all right? Now we do the walls. The walls, my preference is white aluminum and obviously stainless steel on the cooking side. I know I used FRP and it's like when somebody tells you, you know what, I did it this way, but I didn't like it, do it this way because it's better. And sometimes you guys listen and sometimes you guys don't in business and you guys wanna learn the hard way. I'm telling you, please don't use FRP. If you have to and you wanna get your minimal cost, because an FRP sheet, you can find one at Home Depot for 20 bucks. I know that. Uh, a, a white aluminum sheet is probably 160. So obviously there's a huge price gap. 
but it'll last longer in my opinion. I like white aluminum more than I do FRP. That's just my opinion. You guys can use FRP if you want. I'm just giving you my opinion of what I would do if I were doing it over again. So that's step five. All right, now we go to step six. We're almost done, don't worry. We do the outlets. I'm gonna do the symbols of the outlets because it, that's what we do. Switches and lights and the panel. No, sorry, not the lights yet. So we got, when you poke out the wires from the, before the wall side, you're gonna have, you can install your wire mold boxes and that's your outlets, your switches and your panel. That's what you would put and that way you don't have any wires sticking out and you're not like scratching your skin as you're passing by. Trust me, I've done it many, many, many times. You get like big white streaks all over the place. So that's number six. Step number seven. Do not question this because this is how it's gonna work, right? Please, just do it. The hood. I know it sounds weird. Do the hood next. This one that you see right above me, put the hood on. After you put that stainless steel, you're gonna have little gaps there. So make sure you put the hood next. And then we go to the next one, which is a ceiling. Because if you guys can see, I don't know if the camera can get up here. So right here, you guys can see I have a little trim piece. So what I do is I butt that little white aluminum right as close as I can to the hood. And that is how I get that nice clean finish on the hood. So that's how I do my hood. That's why I do it. That's why I do the hood first. Step eight, as you can see here is a ceiling followed by the lights. You guys were just up there. You guys saw that I have strip lights now. I don't use can lights now. I like this more because you can see that it's a big eight foot piece. So it gives you anchor points and it keeps the ceiling nice and snug to the ceiling and you don't get any sagging. FRP tends to sag more. Sagging, when I say that, it means like wavy. When, and I don't like that look personally. I don't like how a trailer looks when it's wavy. I like a nice clean finish. So that's your ceiling and your lights. That's next, okay? Last but not least, the two steps. Number nine and number 10, look at that. 10 easy steps on how to build your food truck. I didn't think about that one, but that might be the title. 10 easy steps on how to build a food truck. I like that one, see? Talking to you guys made me think. We do the plumbing. When I say plumbing, I mean the three compartment sink that I showed you guys in the front, along with the tanks, the hand sink, the water heater, the PEX piping. That's what I mean on step nine when I say plumbing. That's step nine. As you can see, it's outside the walls, so it's not intrusive to any other other work you've done. And then step number 10, last but not least, is the gas lines or propane lines. If you are using propane, this is the little contraption that I made right here. I love this little gadget. You cannot find this at the store because they don't sell it like this, this little manifold, but they do sell the black piping. I bought all this at Home Depot with all the ball valves. Actually these, I have Amazon affiliate links that you can buy them from there. And I do appreciate you guys buying from the channel. It does support the channel. And I do, pre and they are paid, just so you guys know. I get a little sliver for my liver, a piece for my niece, as they say, a fraction of the action. So <laughs> thanks for supporting the channel because it does help in that way. If you guys can use the links, that's as much as I can really sell you guys on. I have nothing else to sell you besides, oh, a spreadsheet where I put all the parts together. I do have in every description of every video, just about, sometimes I forget one that people point out all the links that I use to buy all this fun stuff that I'm telling you and the 10 easy steps on how to build a food truck. And if you guys use those links, I do appreciate it. Again, they're paid Amazon affiliate links. And thanks again for watching. Hopefully those 10 steps of sequence of construction events help you on how to build your food truck from scratch and you can get it done. No joke, eight hours a day. If you do eight hours a day, two weeks. I, 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 I know you can. It took me about a month by myself on off hours and a little bit of help every now and then when I needed to lift something heavy like the hood. So just know that you can get it done four or five weeks, easy, easy, easy. And you can be up and running by March. Thanks again, Frank Baltiers.